there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss. Sorry that my channel hasn't had a new video since the beginning of the year. I'll upload some videos explaining why in a little while, detailing opportunities for some very intensive online training that you can get from me that I'm not able to offer on this channel. Anyway, that's not why I set aside the time, stole the time really from my full-on schedule, to make this video. The reason is that I'm turning 50 at the end of next week, and lots of thoughts are bubbling up about it that I'd like to share. First of all, <laughs> no sympathy cards, please. I'm really looking forward to being this age. It's a good time in my life, with lots of opportunity, serendipity, and real kindness coming my way. Would I have been able to meet the challenge of all those interactions and creative responsibilities 20 years ago? Or even 10? I'm not so sure. I suspect that I might not have had the perspective to appreciate it, nor the wisdom to make it all flow and integrate. So I'm very happy to be turning 50. A life is meant to be used and lived to its fullest, not spent worrying about how you wish you had more of it to live. That's just silly. Secondly, many, many thanks to you, my viewers, friends, and subscribers, for motivating me to share my professional experience with you. It's been inspiring to see so many of you develop and prosper using YouTube, and if I've helped in any small way for you to achieve that success, then I'm more than rewarded but in a real way that directly affects my work. You've also been very helpful to me. Several of the very large-scale projects that I've had over the past couple of years directly relate to my viewers contacting me or recommending me to people with a need for my expertise. Paradoxically, that's meant that I had less time to make videos, so apologies, but at least there's another lesson in that, I guess. YouTube is a good nexus for professional work in the arts, and it's all in what you have to offer and what you put out there. I'm living proof at age 49.999. Until recently, my career has really seemed like a bit of a hodgepodge to me, sort of stapled and scotch taped together, without a lot of continuity. But looking back from this distance, I can see some definite milestones and neatly divisible eras. I seem to be living in 15-year cycles, starting at around age 5 when my family first got a piano, and I begged my parents for a solid year to have lessons on it like my older sister. From that time up to age 20, I went through some very confusing times as a child and young adult, but I always knew that I was going to be a composer. That was the one consistent thought. At age 20, I got serious about my composing and started working with chamber musicians, community orchestras, and dance companies. While those are typical options for a lot of young composers, I really had no idea and was just flailing around, really. Over the next 15 years, Opportunities came and went, but one way or another I was a professional musician and all my income came only from that source, whether it was playing gigs, teaching, or the occasional commission. This is really a period in which I felt that saying anything biographical would be either a waste of time or a parade of half-truths. But seeing it from this distance, I realized that I was learning how to be a man, and for me that was a big struggle, one that I'm not always sure that I won sometimes. But I want to thank everyone who helped me along in that journey. Without their love and support, I wouldn't be here right now. Then at 35, my whole world turned upside down. Suddenly, in an instant of clarity, everything opened up, deepening in profundity and lightening in texture. Inspiration tumbled upon inspiration, and my life practically tore itself apart to make room for the overwhelming surge of creativity. Somehow, I stepped through another door, one that took away everything that I'd worked for and gave me no guarantees of success or happiness. I wish I could say that was some sort of act of courage, but at the time I had absolutely no choice, and I'm not proud of that. I just accept it. I hurt a lot of good people who didn't deserve it, and I'm still sorry about that. It was a change of life. I got a tremendous jolt of willpower, energy, and joy in the act of creation. And it still hasn't stopped. I feel it constantly, flowing into my day's work, guiding my imagination from one thunderstorm to the next, and the next. I've been so fortunate that the things that my spirit feels needs to be said are things that other people have found to be worth hearing. The entire 15 years since that week before my 35th birthday have been one long song with many, many verses. That song has taken my music and my craft around the world and somehow led to a happy home here in New Zealand. I owe it everything.
The strangest thing happened to me the other day. I was asked to write a bio for an online website for which I'm creating intensive tutorials. I've always dreaded this task because I've felt that my bios are often mirrors whose reflection is a bit distorted and indistinct. This time, though, I sat down and composed the bio without needing to check my sources, skip over anything, or fluff up any small-scale achievements. I was completely happy with it. The work spoke for itself, and I didn't have to speak for it. That was a revelation. Not that I've arrived, at least by the yardstick that the arts world measures unqualified professional success but more that this period in which I feel very fulfilled and blessed is resonating with the greater purpose of art in our culture. I'm honored to become an ongoing part of that in any small way. Once I was talking to a young friend of mine, an actress who's working her hardest to make it in Hollywood. She was going on and on about a well-known producer who'd cast her in a couple of things and how great it was to work for him and so on. I told her that besides the point that he was a great screenwriter and had some successes, he was really nothing special. I could tell she didn't understand at all what I meant, but there wasn't any time to explain. Last week, I was invited back as a mentor for the Composers Association of New Zealand Young Composers Workshop in Nelson on the South Island. The format is that professional musicians rehearse and perform works by young composers, who are personally assisted by professional composers, all of whom give feedback after hearing each work. I had attended a few of these annual symposiums at the beginning of the last decade, and I was always impressed by the level of commitment of the performers and the intellectual generosity of the mentors. But mostly, the young composers themselves impressed me. They were so open to new ideas, to guidance, and to the many different approaches and perspectives of all who attended. Ten years later, some of those brilliant young men and women are running the workshop and making this shining opportunity available for other young New Zealand composers just starting out. To see them succeed and to be a part of that effort was the best birthday present I could want. What does that have to do with my actress friend? A very simple observation. At the point that I've reached in my career, what does the word special mean? Those young composers in Nelson are special. I care about them. They are exceptional people, and the survival of my art depends on the choices that they make. Elaine, you are special, not your producers. You're throwing everything you've got at your career, with no guarantees of success or even short-term rewards. And you reap such joy out of the struggle. You don't complain when the casting calls are lean, you just move on. You've got what it takes, and without you and your fellow actors, the industry would fall apart. And the same goes for my viewers. You hold the hope for the future of composing in your hands right now. You know how to share, and you've got the courage to keep trying and trying until something happens. You have no idea how new some of your ideas are, and how much of a difference those inspirations might mean to someone someday. You are special. You are special, not me. The only thing special about me, maybe, is the life that I somehow blundered into living, and how it keeps helping me to help you. I treasure that, but that's my career, not myself. So keep sharing your ideas, thinking big thoughts, and most of all, keep helping each other. You're the first community of internet composers, so keep acting like one. Remember that it's always better to build than tear down, and that universal intellectual resources belong to the world and are meant to be shared. That way we all get stronger, and those who follow us may create worlds that we'll never be able to imagine. Thanks again for all the support you've given me. It really means something. Now get back to work. Thank you.